Hello everyone and welcome back to the Atelier Nekuzuki vlog podcast. I've mostly been calling it vlogs recently, but I honestly don't know what this qualifies under anymore. I used to podcast, but that's not the feeling that this has anymore. So let's go with vlog. Anyway, it's April 1st, 2023 and I am finally back. I will go into that in a few minutes, but this is a very sped up clip of something that you can view in its full glory at the end. I am cutting bags for Ancient Art Yarns and Caroline for her shop. She now stocks them in Calgary, Alberta. These are all new prints and I believe that she will be posting them to the website as well as soon as she has all the stock. We're, I'm chunking it up so that she gets some bags at least um, as I can complete them. I'm currently working on stock in the other prints as well. so. This is going to dive right into it. If you're new to joining me, please hit that subscribe button. And to everyone who is subscribed, please hit the like or share button uh, and share with any friends that you think may enjoy this episode. So one of the first things that I actually do end up going through and doing is writing out. Basically, I took what she posted in her photo and wrote it out as a list of the cuts that she wanted. So in the back there against the wall, you can see the fabrics that she's selected and then I judged based on the print size what bags would be best with them. That was the deal. She chose the prints and then I chose the bag sizes that would suit the print the best. So obviously that giant Nako uh, cat fabric that you saw at the very beginning is not going to work for every bag. Uh, I think it is actually only getting put into large box bags and big bags. Sorry, I'm just going to open the blind for Flynn because he's behind me making demands. All right. Um, so yeah, so this process actually took a while. I think this is about, th um, in total for this video, about three hours worth of work or, uh, three hours of recorded work at least, uh, condensed down into this 43 minute video at the very end is a couple clips. Um, I think it's about a half hour total of just cutting and then trimming up as you saw at the very beginning there, whereas, but all of this is sped up just because even I am bored watching myself. I was also huffing and puffing like I was pregnant again, which to me is very disturbing. I am not pregnant. <laughs> I have my hands full enough right now, but it uh, was definitely a uh, an alarming experience to listen back to myself on these clips. So, but that's okay. And then I'm actually making some more adjustments and just some notes. Um... Amelia would have been in the room with me that day. I don't know where Felix was, but uh, I know when I was watching these clips back last night, I was hearing her tell all the stories. So anyway, let's launch into this is just me cutting everything. So let me launch into the whole saga here of why there haven't been a lot of YouTube videos recently. And that is I was mentioning tech issues at the beginning of the year and it just kind of imploded in my face. <laughs> um, I actually now have a new MacBook because we figured out that the iPad just didn't have enough capacity on it to actually do what I needed to do. It was fast enough. It worked beautifully, um, but it just it didn't have enough capacity. So we sold that on and I picked out a MacBook because um, I actually had had them suggest an iPad. But I realized that I, I do actually need to condense down from my Mac desktop, desktop as well um, because it's now fairly old um, in terms of computers and just there was a couple points where like my ear AirPods wouldn't even connect to the computer um, and I can't connect a Dymo label printer to an iPad. So that actually ended up being the deciding factor towards the MacBook versus an iPad. Um, Although I think the iPads are an excellent option if you're able to access one simply because it's so nice with the Magic Keyboard. It has a really nice touch feel to it, especially if you like the Mac keyboards. But the MacBook also had the benefit. Oh, I'm actually, I'll take a look at what I'm actually doing here. But I'm actually sharpening my rotary blade there. I don't know if it's actually the rotary blade that's causing me issues or if my cutting mat needs to be re replaced. Because it seems like every time I cut on that spot... Um, it's getting like little threads in the exact same space. So anyway, um, <clears throat> going from an iPad to a MacBook was actually 
a significant savings for me as well. I think it was like $300 difference because I need quite a large capacity to be able to save the video onto the actual working disc. So that's where we are. Um, I lucked out that I was able to get an Apple refurbished product and the purchaser of the iPad actually took the keyboard and the pencil with it as well. So it all just kind of worked out really well. After a bunch of definite, my goodness, trying to sell electronics on Facebook Marketplace is something else. Um, I've had issues, some issues, not many issues, but some issues selling things before. But uh, the iPad definitely brought out a lot of uh, interesting characters, that's for sure. But it all worked out in the end. It went to someone who's going to use it for work. Uh, I think she said she's a speech pathologist, so that's actually really cool. It's going to really benefit her, I think, in being able to take the notes and such is what she said she really wanted it for. And so far, so good with the MacBook. Now, obviously, this is the first video I've done on it, but it has edited it well so far. Um, and I'm going to see how it actually does with this voiceover. And I don't know, make sure that it actually ends up saving. I don't know why I showed you that, but okay. Um, so these pieces of paper are actually cardstock and they are templates for my bags uh, so I have a template for my large box bag my small box bag um, the knot bag which you saw earlier on the dog fabric and also I do actually do it for the Kato drawstring bags as well I know I know they are all rectangular cuts and you would honestly think Katie why do you need to have rectangular cuts written out but I have legitimately cut large box bags the wrong direction for the zipper. It was actually a really big problem a few years ago, and so that's why I started doing it. And when I say a few years ago, like, oh my goodness, probably when we moved into our old house, so like six or seven years ago. <laughs> um, but anyway, the cardstock is a very cheap, economical way for me to be able to have these templates and just lay them down. It also gives me a good idea. I know they're not see-through, but it get, generally gives me a good idea of what is going to fit um, on a bag. So like when I'm trying to make decisions, like at, I talk about this all the time with, and even I did when I was doing the fabric previews, I talk all the time about like when I get home, sometimes fabrics fit bags that I didn't expect. So like those giant cats very well could have done well on a small box bag. Now I figured out that they probably won't. Does that mean that they will never show up a small box bag? No, I will probably be crazy and put one on there, but um, that's a story for another day. <coughs> and really, realistically, unrelated. But it, like, just being able to lay, lay a piece of paper over it helps a lot more than, like, using a quilt. Um, well, now Flynn's chewing the camera base. That's right, I had to chase him off here in a few minutes. Although it's not as wiggly as I thought. There, cat gone. Um, anyway, but yeah, having been able to lay the, te the paper template over the actual, like, where I'm going to cut helps significantly because it gives me a good idea of what I'm going to get versus just laying, like, a ruler over it and, like, the quilt ruler that I'm using. Um, because it's not large enough to actually encase the whole area that I'm using. Um the paper is actually better for me and once I'm done with it I can recycle it it's not a big deal I have definitely there's a couple that I need to cut out again um, and replace because they've been beaten up because I was using them as a cutting guide as well which is not the best idea with paper um, but you know what again I'll recycle it and I can cut a new one so a cheap economical way to get your patterns done now I have seen people also suggest like things like um, cutting boards from the dollar store and stuff like that and that works really well if you've got small patterns so actually one of the ones that I might consider doing that with is the NCW um, simply because it would be it that would be nice to be able to fussy cut a bit more than I do with like the straight bags obviously I'm just I'm cutting the full width going straight across these bags are designed for fat quarters um, with plus a little bit actually the large box bags are fat quarter plus um, <coughs> excuse me, because of their handles, actually. And, uh, but otherwise, these are all designed to work within a fat quarter, and so it's, um, it's really straightforward just to cut across. But with some of the new things I'm going to be bringing in, such as the OB purses and wallets and such, I do want to be able to see a little bit better what I'm actually cutting so that, like, 
um, stuff doesn't necessarily, like, it's not going to be perfect, but just so things aren't obviously off center or something, if it's a very strict print, which actually the first, um, necessary clutch wallet, which is the NCW that I was referring to, um, the first one I made was a very pretty strict line pattern, and I realized afterwards that I lucked out that I lined up so well over the snap, actually, so, hey, live and learn, that's why prototypes are done, besides trying to figure out interfacing. By the way, this cat toast fabric is so adorable. Um, what's going to end up happening is a lot of these I am going to try and restock. Caroline and I are going back to Japan in May. Um, so if I'm using stuff up, which I did in some cases here, I'm going to try and find it again while I'm there. I'm hoping I can get more cat toast because I want bags with cat toast. That's sassy cat patchwork. see me kind of fussing with it because it's like I gotta I gotta get it straight especially with like those squares are pretty unforgiving <laughs> all right we'll go into the next clip so a lot of what ends up happening is just management also um, this actually should be after the last clip but the last clip is showing up at the end of this this is me figuring out what will work for Kato I decided that the giant Neko didn't, or I think what I decided is that I need to fussy cut it more than would be allowed there. Flynn is obviously quality control inspecting. Gotta say, it's really weird not to have Remy in this new studio. Um, Flynn's good and all, but Remy was best cat. Just checking everything over, making sure I've also made all my cuts. And I think actually, yeah, what I'm doing there is I'm actually counting bags up to figure out how much um, lining fabric I need to cut. Because obviously I have an exterior and an interior, so the interior has to be cut separately. So I'm going through, I have three different colors of interiors. So I'm checking against what I actually have, like what I need white, what I need beige, and what I need blue for. And then also, now we're doing... Kato sorting. I think what I ended up deciding here was that I would cut everything new because what was in the bin was already mostly matched up with what was um, already cut previously. So yeah, so there's me counting what I will be using for the Kato. Just using tally marks. So the last, uh, I'm coming up on the end of what I'm going to voice over the last of it. It's going to be a nice, gentle, calming, hopefully, ASMR of me cutting and then also cutting up these pieces actually in half so obviously I would really appreciate if you do stay to the end of the video um, that always helps my views on YouTube helps bring new people to the channel and hopefully new people to the project bag world um, but I also understand if you don't have the time for that you can head on out um, but I really appreciate you joining me for this first bit I hope you guys all have a fantastic week. I'm hoping to go back to a weekly upload schedule now that I have the laptop. Um, and obviously subscribe to the newsletter if you would like to see that link directly in your inbox when it is available. Well, on Mondays. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll chat with you guys all next week. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I hope you have a fantastic few days. Bye.